Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make a watercolor sweatshirt. Today's project is a sweatshirt that I got from JiffyShirts.com, and it's a Hanes Ultimate Cotton, and uh, it's an extra large, and it's 90% cotton and 10% polyester, and it takes the dye very well. So what I'm doing here is I'm scrunching up the sweatshirt, doing the uh, tall peaks and low valleys, the TDS, tall deep scrunch. And I have wiffle balls down at the bottom. And the reason I put the wiffle balls down there is because I don't want the sweatshirt uh, sitting down at the bottom, like in the muck area. When I do the t-shirts, I normally wrap the material around the ball. I'm not really doing that with this. Like I said, I just want the ball to sort of elevate it so I can get better flow. And yes, I'm using a shopping basket. So I was at the dollar store and I see that gal all the time. And so I just asked her if I could take this home and do a couple of tie dye projects with it and then clean it up and bring it back. She said, sure, no problem. This basket is rather large, right? It's a shopping basket, and this is only an extra large sweatshirt. And I have some three X's that I wanna do like this, but I don't have anything bigger. What do you guys use for your bigger projects? I placed a rack down inside of a tote, and then I put the basket on top of that. And now I'm layering on my ice. And this is my new ice from the new ice machine that I did a unboxing on. And I love it, it's great. And I figured out how to uh, change the setting so it's not so thick, so it's making really nice ice cubes. And I'm just adding enough to where I don't see any more of the fabric showing through. Now it's time for the fun part, we get to add the dye. And this method is called dye over eyes, and it's abbreviated DOI. So when you're in the Facebook group and you see people do DOI, dye over ice, or DUI, dye under ice. That looks pretty good right there, but there was barely anything left in the jar, so I decided I would just sprinkle the rest of it on. That way I could recycle the container. I have so much dye and so little room, so no sense in putting it back in the drawer for barely a spoonful. I tidied up and then I came back for the tote because I'm gonna take it in the house where it's nice and warm to batch it. And I was looking at it and I thought it could use a little more ice to help get things flowing. So I decided to add a thin layer of my nugget ice just to help things out. And then I took it in the house where it's nice and warm and I let it batch for 48 hours after the ice melts. On Facebook, I've noticed a resurgence of questions about the washout process. So I'm going to try to thoroughly explain my process. Everybody does it just a little bit differently, but this really works for me, and my whites stay white and my colors stay vibrant. All right, so before I start rinsing anything out, I go to the washing machine and I get it prepared. So I set it for a hot water cycle and I add my detergent, and I like to use professional detergent, and it's called Kirilon, and I get that from Dharma. If you don't have Kirilon or Synthropol or Dharma's textile detergent or whatever, professional detergent there is. I know a lot of people do use Dawn. I've never used it, so I can't really speak on that. But I have heard that if you don't have um, Kirlon or Dawn, it's better to not use anything during the washout process. Now, after it's been washed and dried and worn a couple times, then, then you know, just wash it with whatever, whatever you use. Okay, now at the sink for the rinse out. You want to start by using cold water to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fibers and then increase your water too hot and rinse until the water runs clear. The reason why you're rinsing with cold water and it's important 
to get that soda ash out because you don't want the dark colors to redeposit on your light. And if you're in a rush or impatient and you're not batching for at least 24 hours, you're going to have a lot of unbonded dye and a lot of soda ash. So you need to rinse very well. So once that water is clear, I take it to the washing machine and let the washing machine do its thing. And during the hot water cycle part of it, like on the second hot water cycle, I will take a little clear plastic cup and I will scoop it up and I will look at that hot water. And if it's basically clear, I know that I'm ready for my final wash using Millsoft. And Millsoft is a professional softener that I also get from Dharma. And then I put it in the dryer and I iron the shirt and we come back and we see the results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our watercolor sweatshirt after it's been washed and dried. And I think it turned out amazing. I love this color combination. The picture on the left is Bella wearing it outdoors on a gloomy Oregon day. And then the rest of the flat pictures are inside on my dye table being uh, lit with a ring light. So the true color of the sweatshirt is like right in between. I'm really pleased with the color flows on this one. I'm glad that I added the wiffle balls to the basket because that's what's creating those beautiful flower shapes. And when I started to wash it or, or rinse it in the sink, there were some very obvious white spots and I was super nervous about that. I was worried that they would be really stark and just like make the project look ruined. Not at all. I think they blend in really nicely and it makes the colors pop. And that's one thing guys, you know, you shouldn't look at your projects when they're wet with dye and freak out. You have to wash it and then dry it and look at it because it's a night and day difference. Look at those beautiful color flows. So the deep purple is giving off the blues and like the periwinkle, sort of the grayish purplish color. And then the amethyst is that really pretty magenta that's fading out into the soft pinks. I love this sweatshirt and I wish it was in my size, but it isn't. So I'm going to be putting it up on my Etsy and I'm going to be making several more uh, different colorways. But if you're interested, please check out my Etsy and the link for it is down below in the description box. So what do you guys think of this sweatshirt? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.